Hi, uh, I'm going to read something I found on uh, the internet that I found a long time ago. I thought this thing looks actually like it, it's actually more uh, in depth and more to the point. And I'd like a Muslim's take on it when I'm done reading it. Okay, response to Islamic information. Science in the Quran, chapter 11, the sun and moon and their orbits. Okay, exposing Dr. Maurice Bacall's misinformation. But we'll see if it is misinformation here, okay? In his article on the orbit of the sun and moon, Shabir Ali quotes Bacali's citation of Al-Tabari's comments on the Quran. Uh, two verses in the Quran refer to the orbits of the sun and moon. After mentioning the sun and moon, God, Allah says, Each one is traveling in an orbit with its own motion. That's Quran 2133. Also, there's also 30, Quran 36 through 40. And if you read 36 through 40 and 40 through 42, it sounds like the sun and moon uh, travel in boats similar to their offspring Noah. Okay. How did the author of the Quran know th of this? And even after the Quran was revealed, the early commentators could not conceive of the orbits of the sun and moon. The 10th century commentary, Tabari, could not explain this, so he said, it is our duty to keep silence when we do not know. That's 17, 15 quoted in the Bible, the Quran, and the Science, page 161. Dr. Bacall comments, this shows just how incapable men were of understanding this concept of the sun's and the moon's orbit. The Bible of Quran, Science, page 161. Okay, response. This gives a misleading impression that Tabari had no explanation on the preceding Quranic statement regarding the orbit of the sun and moon. The fact is that not only did Tabari say something to... Not only did Tabari uh, have something to say... He even quotes a tradition from Muhammad on the authority of Ibn Abbas, uh, where the former extensively comments on the orbits of the sun and moon. The following lengthy quotation is taken from the History of Al Tabari, Volume 1, General Introduction, and from the Creation to the Flood. Uh, translation, Franz Rosenthal, State University of New York. Press Albany, 1989, pages 231 to 237. Among the traditions transmitted from Messenger of Allah on his subject is what I have been told by Muhammad. B. E. Abi Mansur al Amuli Kalaf, B. Wasil Abu Nayam, Umar B. Sabah al Bakar. Bukhi Mukatil B. Hayim Hayan Abd Al Rahman's B. Okay, yeah, it just goes on. Abu Dar Al Gifari. Okay, I, I walked hand in hand with the Prophet. Around evening, when the sun was about to set, we did not stop looking at it until it had set. He continued, I asked the messenger of Allah, where does it set? He replied, it sets in the heaven, and it's been raised from heaven to earth, uh, from heaven to heaven, until it is raised to the highest, seventh heaven. Eventually, when it is underneath the throne, it falls down and prostrates itself, and the angels who are in charge of its prostration themselves, to, uh, in charge of it, prostrate themselves together with it. The son then says, my Lord, Whence do you command me to rise? From where I set or from where I rise? He continued. This is meant by Allah's word, quote, And the sun, it runs to a place where it is, where it is to reside at night. Well, at least... <laughs> Alright, where it is held underneath the throne. Quote, that is the decree of one almighty and knowing, unquote. By this is meant the procedure of the quote mighty Lord and his royal authority the Lord who is quote knowing unquote about his creation he continued 
Gabriel, or Jibril, brings to the sun a garment of luminosity from the light of the throne, according to the measure of the hours of the day. It is longer in the summer and shorter in the winter, and of intermediate length in autumn and spring. He continued, the sun puts on that garment as one of you who puts on his garment. Oh, we, oh, really? The sun puts on this garment like we put on our garment. Isn't that something? Really, that really sounds scientific, doesn't it? Then it is set free to roam in the air of heaven until it rises whence it does. Yeah, nothing about the earth rotating. So this is supposed to be a uh, metaphor of the, of the earth rotating, huh? huh? Well, continue here. All right, all right. The prophet said, It is as if it had been held for three nights. Then it will not be covered with the luminosity and will be commanded to rise from where it sets. This is meant by Allah. Quote, when the sun shall be rolled up. When the sun shall be rolled up. He continued, The same course is followed by the moon in its rising. It's running on the horizon of the heaven. It's setting. It's rising to the highest seventh heaven, it's being held underneath the throne, it's prostration, and it's asking for permission. Why, that really sounds scientific, doesn't it? But Jib, or Gabe, well, Gabriel, I'll, I'll call him Jibril here, I don't want to call him Gabriel, but Jibril brings it a garment from the light of the footstool. Really? He continued, quote, this is meant by all his words, quote, he made the sun a luminosity and the moon a light. Abidar concluded, Then I went away together with the messenger of Allah, and we prayed the evening prayer. The re this report from the messenger of Allah indicated that the only difference between the condition of the sun and that of the moon is that the luminosity of the sun comes from the wrap of the luminosity of the throne with which the sun was covered, while the light of the moon comes from the wrap of the light of the footstool with which the moon is covered. <laughs> uh, the other report referring to a different concept of is what I was told by Muhammad B. Abin Mansur Khalif B. Wasil Abu Naim Mukatil B. Hayyan Ikhma. One day when Ibn Abbas was sitting at home in the, the mosque, a man came up to him and said, Ibn Abbas, I heard Kab, the rabbi, tell a marvelous story about the sun and the moon. He continued, Ibn Abbas, who had been reclining, sat up and asked what it was. The man said, he suggested that on the day of resurrection, the sun and moon will be brought as if they were two hamstrung oxen and flung into hell. Ikrim uh, continued, Ibn Abbas became contorted with anger and exclaimed three times, Kab is lying, Kab is lying, Kab is lying. This is something Jewish. He wants to inject into Islam. God is too majestic and noble to mete out punishment where there is obedience to him. Have you not heard Allah's word? And he subjected to you the sun and the moon being constant, referring to their constant obedience. How would he, that's Allah, punish two servants that are praised for constant obedience? May Allah curse that rabbi and his rabbinate. How insolent is he toward Allah, and what a tremendous fabrication has he told about those who those two servants that are obedient to Allah. He, com he continued. Then he said several times, We return to Allah. He took a little piece of wood from the ground and started to hit the ground with it. He did that for some time, then lifted his head. He threw away the little piece of wood and said, You want me to tell you what I heard the messenger of Allah say about the sun and moon and the beginning of the creation and how things went with them? He said, We would. Indeed, may Allah show mercy unto you. He said, When the messenger of Allah has asked about that, he replied, when Allah was done with his creation and only Adam remains to be created, he created two sons from the light of his throne. His foreknowledge told him that he would leave here one son, so he created it, large as the world as it is from the east to west. His foreknowledge 
was called him, and he would efface it and change it to a moon. So the moon is smaller in size than the sun, but both are seen as small because of the sun's... Oh, Al a remoteness from the earth. Oh, I see. That was added. I'm going to have to read that again. And that's stop here. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to continue here. But I'm going to stop it here.